what you guys got another video on the privacy app all windows users must have we're going to take a look at the new little updated tool that you can use to deal with all your privacy concerns on windows 11. now there's quite a few options available out there to use this is just another option for you in case you're looking for a cool little app to use to deal with all of your privacy so let's take a look at it uh, it's a straightforward little tool that you can use by just putting check marks in and it's called XD Anti-Spy. It's a pretty useful little application for doing a lot of jobs that you would have to do manually, whereas this could take care of it all in one go. And I'm pretty sure that he's gonna add a few more things to it. He says he hasn't really updated it for a long time until recently because he's now switched to Linux, but I'm glad he's actually restarted the project again and started to add new features to it because it's quite a useful little application. It used to be called XP Anti-Spy, it's now called XD Anti-Spy. So click on the releases and latest here, and this will take you to this page here. And all you need to do here is go down to the bottom and use the download uh, for it. So I'm gonna click on this and then go down to the bottom of the page, and we can download it and uh, use this application on our system. This is a fresh install of Windows 11, which I've got on here. And again, you can reverse a lot of these settings as well. So you can see here, we do have this one right here. So I'm gonna click on this. It's only a small little file. And uh, there is the actual file. We're gonna extract all this to the same location by right clicking and clicking extract. And there we have the little application right here. No need to install it. It just basically works from its own container here. So let's go ahead and click run anyway. And we're gonna click yes to the user account control. And this will open up the application right here. So here we have the actual application. You can expand it and make it bigger if you wish. So first starting off with the ad block type of settings here. These are for the ads that Microsoft try to force on you. And when you highlight them, you can see it gives you information down on the little box down below, which is quite useful. It's going to disable the setting ads, personalized ads, lock screen tips and ads, uh, finished settings ads and file explorer ads and so on. So check marking all those is a definite must, and this will save you a bit of time. Moving on to the AI in Copilot and Recall. Again, don't show Copilot in Taskbar, and we also have don't allow Windows to save snapshots of your uh, screen. And we also have don't allow system-wide snapshots, and you can turn that off here if you wanted to. And you can check mark what you like, but I'm gonna be check marking all of this just to show you how basically it works. Moving on to the next section, which is Microsoft Edge. If you do use Edge, you may want to check mark some of these to disable a lot of the features inside here that harvest data and also uh, some of the stuff that you might not want running on your system, like disable access to collections feature. And uh, there's some other ones inside here as well. So choose what you don't want. If you don't want the co-pilot symbol in Edge, you can just check mark this and it will remove them. So let's move on down to the privacy section. You will see that some of these are already checkmarked and that's because uh, by default, these are checkmarked here with this little application. You can checkmark this one here and this will turn off all telemetry uh, data collection on that system. Now this is useful for people that are running Windows 11 Home and Windows 10 Home. And this does work with uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11, but with Windows Home Editions, they don't have the group policy editor, so you will have to do registry edits and this will do it all for you. So let's move on down to the next section, which is gaming. I've left this here. So turning off any power throttling, moving on to the next section, which is system. You can see it does a bunch of uh, things like uninstall fax printer and a bunch of other stuff there. Going on to the taskbar here, you can also disable Bing cloud search and you can also hide most used apps in the start menu and so on. You can go through here and check mark the tweaks plugin and this will clear all the icon cache hide hidden file extensions and also enable snap assist to fly out and it's got a, a few other things like use light theme and we also have a security plugin here once you've done that you can apply this to all your settings and you can see it's now going through and doing these for us now you can reverse these by just removing the check mark and applying the settings again and this will reverse the settings that you've done. It might be advisable to create a system restore point. You can export all of your current settings here and you can even copy them to clipboard if you want to and share them. You can also see here on the tool section, we have a refresh and we also have search for 
uh, crappy apps and you can basically do a search for these and it will then go ahead and do a search on the system for any sort of crap apps that you might have on here. For instance, you can see Microsoft Your Phone. If you don't want those, you can check mark all of this and it will remove all of these from your computer. Zoom Video and also Dev Home and there's a load of other ones here. If you show all installed, you can still remove some of these right here if you want to do by putting check marks in some of these and removing them. I'll show you that in a second, but let's just go ahead and go back to the main search part and we'll do a quick search again and we'll remove these from the computer. We'll let the search finished and it's now finished here. So it's going to remove Outlook, get help and so on. So you can either select all or you can go in one at a time and check mark what you want to remove from your computer. Remember, if you use any of these apps, then don't remove them. It's that simple. Click on the removed uh, selected apps and this will go ahead and start removing them. It says they have been removed from your system. And now let's go show all installed. And if there's any ones in here that it didn't scan and pick up on, but you still want to remove them, you can check mark them and it will remove them from the computer. So let's go ahead and remove this Microsoft people here. If you do want to use that, then obviously don't remove it. But I'm going to remove it and click select and remove selected app. And you can see it's now removed it. Now, I'm pretty sure that once these are removed from the system, there's no way of putting these back on apart from using a script or something like that to put them on from Microsoft. So be careful what you actually remove from here because you are removing the actual main application here. So don't go selecting all of these and just removing everything because there is applications in here that you might need like the Windows Store and other things like Windows Terminal and stuff like that. So if you don't need some of this stuff, you can remove it, but be very careful when you're removing it from this section here. So th that is all those uh, removed here. I'm not gonna remove too much from that location because I'm just showing you how it basically works. So now we've done that, let's take a look at what else this little application has. So if you go up to the little question mark here, you can check for updates here. And we also have visit the GitHub uh, site, which is where this creator has got his link to. And we can also go over to the other side here, which is the little drop down section right here. And this will give you access to plugins and also uninstall OneDrive and restart Explorer if you need to restart Explorer to make changes. So you can see here, I've just removed uh, OneDrive here. There was a little bit of red coming up here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, maybe that might be a bug. I really don't know. Or maybe it's just something that happens when you use the uninstall OneDrive. And I can see it coming up here. So it didn't remove that correctly by the looks of it. So bear that in mind. You can always remove that by just going to the actual uh, section on your apps and just clicking on uninstall and it will remove that. So if you want to reverse any of these, just remove the check mark here and click apply settings and it will put them back to defaults. But that is pretty much it. That is the application. A very useful little app. And again, I'm pretty sure there's going to be more added to this in the future. I hope there is because there's plenty of other stuff he can add to this little application. Anyway, let's try something else here. Now, this application is not a one stop shop. It's not going to do everything for you. Uh, it has taken care of quite a bit, but it's still quite a lot that you have to take care of yourself. So it's not perfect, but it is a step in the right direction. And again, you can use this to quickly make changes to something that you don't want to go through manually doing. So it has gone through here and disabled some of this stuff here, but this can be done with batch files and scripts and stuff like that as well. So now some people like to block uh, Microsoft IP addresses and also domain names, and you can do this and you can do it via the firewall and you can also do it via the host file, which I showed you the other day. Whether this is 100% foolproof, I really don't know. Uh, but it's a step in the right direction. If you want to block some of that stuff, you can do by using this method. I'm not 100% convinced it's going to stop all telemetry, but it will block a lot of Microsoft from connecting up to your computer and also sending stuff out. So what you need to do is get yourself a PowerShell script and use the unrestricted uh, execution policy for this and then run the uh, PowerShell script that you want to use or batch file or whatever it is you want to use. And this will enter these entries into your firewall settings. And this is added this into the Windows firewall here. I'll quickly show you what it's done. It's basically added in a heap of entries in here to block 
a lot of Microsoft known IP ranges that they use on your computer. Let's go ahead and type Windows uh, Firewall here. We can open this up and we can go into the advanced settings right here. And once we go into the advanced settings, you'll see the entries have all been made in here. So it's going to block a lot of their IP addresses that are known to these. The problem is uh, you're talking about a billion pound company, you know what I mean? So they're going to have a heap of IP addresses and different stuff that they're constantly changing. And whether you can keep up and updating this on a regular basis is another thing because it's closed uh, OS. It's not an open OS. It's not open source, which means it's locked down and there's going to be stuff in the background that you can't stop. Now, you can see a lot of this stuff in Wireshark and things like that. But again, whether you can keep on top of it and block everything is probably impossible to block everything. But it's going to block a hell of a lot uh, of stuff. So let's go ahead and I'll quickly show you. These are the entries that is added in there. It's added in a ton of these. And these are all known um, Microsoft IP addresses that they use on a regular basis to connect into your computer and also connect out. And this has just blocked the in and outbound traffic for those IP addresses. So if you're really that paranoid and you want to go that far, you can do. And I'll leave these on my website so you'll be able to download and use these if you want to use them. There's also a hosts one here, which I mentioned in a previous video, but you can also run this in a script as well. Someone said an eight minute video to say that you did it in a minute. Well, there you go. That's less than a minute, just as I wanted to prove a point there, because people always like to, you know, critique and troll in the comments section. But there you go. Less than a minute to do that. So people were saying you can't do it and you can if you use a script. So there you go. So just open this up and you can see it's ed entered in all of these entries and you don't have to do it the way I showed you the other day. You can use scripts, but again, you use whichever way you want to do it. But that's basically how you do it. And that will block a lot of known uh, IP addresses and also known domain names from connecting in and connecting out of your computer. It's not foolproof, but it's a step in the right direction if you want to go that far with things. Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.